State Coordinator, Coordinator of the Digital Learning Unit. And we're happy to bring this uh, virtual teacher, virtual PLC opportunity to you. For those of you that are working with um, homegrown virtual programs, um, where your districts are building programs or you're utilizing content and uh, navigating uh, that online virtual program for your students. In the chat or on the screen, there is a link to Pear Deck. You can go to pairdeck.com or you can use the link in the chat and then enter the code CFTDVE and that will help you to join today's presentation. I'd like to introduce you to our DLU specialists that are gonna be here um, helping you along. I've already introduced myself. In addition to that, we have our Assistant State Coordinator of Digital Learning, Amanda Perry, uh, Sherry Kennedy, which is one of our DLU specialists, and Stephen Walker. In addition to them, today, your uh, facilitation of what you guys are gonna be learning about is going to be presented by our other specialist, Rainbow Bagsby. I'm going to now hand that over to you and Rainbow, if uh, you want to take it from here. I'm so glad everybody's here. If you do have any questions, feel free to put those in chat and we'll do what we can to help you out. Um, I don't know if it's me, but I can't hear you, Marissa. Okay. All right. So today, All right. sorry, I have a little lag in my internet. <laughs> So today we're going to talk about a few things. Um, we're gonna talk about Creative Commons. We're gonna talk about requesting copyrighted materials. And we're also gonna talk about creating your own materials. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. It's 10 o'clock. Um, hopefully you were able to join the Pear Deck. Um, Amanda's gonna to continue to put that link into the chat in case you still need it. So our agenda today is we're gonna go over Creative Commons. Um, Creative Commons searches and filters, requesting permissions, Canva, images and Google Draw, and slides. Um, and then finally, we'll end with an exit ticket. And our objectives are to network, collaborate, troubleshoot, and support. Okay, so. As Kirsten said, my name is Rainbow Bagsby. I'm a DESE Digital Learning Specialist and I'm here to support you. If there's anything I can do for you, uh, whether it's curriculum or technology related, you can reach me at rainbowbagsby at ade.arkansas.gov. Okay, so the first topic is the Creative Commons resources. And I wanna ask first, and please answer in chat, what are some of the reasons that an online teacher would wanna use resources that are not provided in a purchased curriculum? Okay, differentiation. So students can't Google the answers. Accessibility, supplemental resources, RTI, specific needs. To help explain topics, SPED. Variety to the delivery of the content. Um, so I was an online teacher for a long time for Virtual Arkansas, and I also worked as a distance learning instructor for uh, uh, the Distance Learning Collaborative. Um, and one of the things that I realized was for my specific content area, there weren't a lot of resources out there that I could use to supplement my curriculum and my activities. I didn't really want to like put all my energy and efforts into the purchased curriculum because it's not necessarily um, targeted towards the Arkansas state standards or the vocabulary that I was using or uh, the content that I was using. And so um, a lot of times I would end up 
using additional resources for like formative assessments and activities. And eventually at Virtual Arkansas, we just began building our own curriculum. And so I had to learn along the way to start creating my own resources if I couldn't find resources that would suit me that were available to me legally. So I'm gonna move on here. Um, so we're gonna talk about licenses and uh, we wanna be conscientious, conscientious about the legality of the resources we're using. And so I'm gonna play a video about um, Creative Commons licensing. You don't have to play this on your Pear Deck. I'll just play it here on the main screen and I'm gonna stop share and make sure I'm sharing my audio and play the video. Have you ever wondered how to download and share digital content legally? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the Internet. Information and content can fly between us in exciting new have you ever wondered how to download and share digital content legally? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the Internet. Information and content can fly between us in exciting new ways. But it's important to know that when something is created, say a photo, a document, or a music track, it's automatically protected by copyright. Copyright enables people to say who can share and reuse their creations. You must always obtain someone's permission before sharing or reusing their work, even when it's posted online. But what if a creator wants everyone to use their work, without the hassle of granting permission over and over? This is where Creative Commons can help. Okay, so there's an issue with the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a different screen and see if that helps the issue. Um, let me give me just a second. Let me choose a different screen. Not sharing. Creative Commons provides licensing tools that are free to use. Let me try it from here. Let's try this one more time. Have you ever wondered how? Okay, let's try it this time. Let me know if it's not working. How to download and share digital content legally? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the Internet. Information and content can fly between us. In okay. It's not a problem. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and share my screen again and we'll skip the video, but I'll do a verbal explanation. <laughs> Exciting you. Have you ever wondered I'll how to the video? Um, so you'll be able to come back to it. Let me point out a few things real quick. I don't know if you can see at the bottom of the page, but the source is cited um, in the appropriate citation. 
it uh, the source is also linked over the name of the resource and um, it says the video Creative Commons Kiwi by Creative Commons. I'm not going to try to pronounce that word. New Zealand from YouTube is licensed as Creative Commons. So that's just kind of modeling how you would um, cite your resources. OK, so I would encourage you that's a six minute video to go back and try to watch that on your own when you have time. Um, but it basically got, talks you through the different types of Creative Commons Commons licensing. And so I'm going to do that for you. We have six different types of Creative Commons licensing. The first one is CCBY. And this BY means you have to um, give attribution to the author. That means you have to give the author credit for their work. And so basically, you're saying, um, you can reuse this material, you can modify it, you can do anything you want with it, but you have to say this work is by the author and give that person credit for it. Another type of license is CCBYSA. So this is um, Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike. And notice the little icons above the um, initials. So this means you have to give the author attribution and you also have to share what uh, the resource again with the same type of license that they shared it with. So it, you would have to share it as BYSA as well. Uh, so, so give attribution and share alike. The next type of license is Creative Commons BYNC. And BY, again, means you have to give attribution to the author and non-commercial um, is what the NC stands for. And if you look at the icons, that's, that helps you remember what NC means. So give attribution, but you can't use it to make money. So as teachers, um, we're, we're typically in a non-commercial environment. So this would not affect us. This would be for like businesses. In the top right, we have the Creative Commons license, BYNCSA. And so the BY, again, it stands for give attribution to the author. NC is non-commercial and SA is share alike. So you can't use it to make money and you have to share it with the exact same copyright or Creative Commons license that the author shared it. Okay, the next one is CCBYND. And so BY, we have to give attribution to the author. ND means non-derivative. So we are not allowed to modify or change the resource in any way. You have to leave it as is. Um, and finally, uh, the most restrictive type of license is um, BYNCND. So that means um, you have to give attribution. It is got. It has to be used for non-commercial purposes, and then you uh, you can. It's non-derivative, so you will not be able to modify it. Um, so these are the different types of licenses, and what we're going to do now. Um, I know that's a lot of information, and it it takes us a while to retain that, but we're going to practice. Okay, so. If you're logged into the Pear Deck, um, please allow me to give you the instructions and we'll do it this way. So for the red heart, please show me the license um, that is where you have to give attribution, it's non-commercial and you cannot change it. Drag the red heart to that license. So you give attribution, you can't make money off of it, and you must leave it as is. You cannot modify it. Okay, so that was the red heart. Now we're going to do the orange flag. Which license must you give attribution, but you cannot modify? Use the orange flag. 
So you're going to give attribution, but you cannot modify. At the end, I'm going to show you um, how everyone answered. Okay. So for the yellow star, we're going to show which license must you give attribution, but you can't make money off of it. You give attribution, but you cannot make money off of it. For the green triangle, the only requirement is that you give attribution. And finally, the blue square is going to be you give attribution, but you have to share the resource the same way the creator shared it. You give attribution, but you share the resource in the same way the creator shared it. I'm actually really, really impressed because this, I mean, it really does take a second to understand. You almost have some basic um, understanding of this already. So the only one that we didn't mark was the BYNC SA, which is um, provide attribution. You can't make money off of it, um, but you must share it this, with the same license that um, the author did. So um, great job. I'm going to hide the responses again, and then I'm going to continue on. Do y'all have any questions about that or comments? I have a question okay. because I know I've seen the CC several different places, but I don't ever remember seeing any of the other letters or symbols. Okay, so Is CC, that when you're in YouTube, CC is also a abbreviation for closed captioning. So sometimes you might confuse those and I had to figure that out over time that that's not the same thing. But uh, when, so, when there's creative commons, the one thing they all have in common, in common is you have to give attribution to the author. Um, I'm not sure if I've ever seen any that just say CC without the other stuff, but I would think that would be a CCBY. But I'm just wondering, where do you see this? Is it at the bottom on their last page or? How yeah, you can find it on um, the bottom page. Sometimes they're in the terms of use of a website. Okay. Um, okay. So if you don't see these, you must assume that it's copyrighted. Right, okay. Yeah, and I might show you some examples as we move forward in this. Okay, so searches and filters. Um, if you filter your searches for your resources, it will help you save time and sanity. So um, knowing how to do this is um, um, pretty important. So I'm gonna go through how to do a YouTube filtered search and an advanced Google search with a Creative Commons filter. Um, some of you may already know how to do this, um, but it's going to help others. So I'm going to go ahead and go to this different screen and show you from here. So when you do a YouTube search, and I'm going to do an example for you. Can you see the YouTube screen? No? Okay. Sometimes that happens when I change screens in the middle of a presentation. Okay, can you see it now? All right, so when you go to YouTube, usually there's a, a search bar at the top and I'm just gonna random search turtles um, to look for turtle videos. So once I do the random search, you'll see a button up in the top left called filters. And so you click on that and you come over here to features. 
So this is what I was um, talking about, Alicia. Sometimes the videos are marked CC and that doesn't mean Creative Commons. It means um, closed captioning. But down here, you can see the Creative Commons filter. So I'm gonna press it. So these are gonna bring all the turtle videos up that are Creative Commons. Now you should always check to make sure that the video you choose is actually Creative Commons. So I'm gonna click on it and show you how to do that. Okay, so once you get um, to the video place, you're gonna look down here, the Masonic curators are the person, are the people who published this. And then you mean Glasses USA. Then you can click show more down here and look for the license information. So this is Creative Commons Attribution License, reuse allowed. So that means it's the CCBY. You can use this video any way you want, as long as you give attribution to Masonic curators. Another trick I want to show you in case you might, might not know, if you come here to the three dots, you have an option to open transcript. And anytime, um, if there is one, it'll open when you click it. Sometimes there's not. But anytime you give videos to students online or within a, a content management system or a learning management system, you need to also provide a transcript um, for students who are um, hearing impaired. Oh, okay, so look, it generated um, the transcript up here. All I have to do is copy this and paste it into a new document in order to um, include that with my video in my content management system or my learning management system. Are there any questions about the YouTube filtered search or any of the things that I covered just now? All right, well, I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And now I'm gonna go over doing an advanced Google search. And so I'm gonna to click to go to the Google search bar. So Google also has the search bar up here and I'm gonna look for the same thing because I like turtles. I'm gonna look for turtles. Now, once you do your search, what you do is you go to the top right of your Google search screen and click on the gear, which is the settings. Um, you can come down and you can see the advanced search um, button. And this pulls up a whole bunch of options for me to be able to filter this search that I'm doing. The main one that I usually um, change is the usage rights. And so you can say, um, I'm looking for turtle information that is free to use and share. Or you could also do free to use, um, share or modify, which I do this a lot actually. So I'm gonna click advanced search and it's gonna do the search for me. Okay, so all of this information um, should be um, Creative Commons. Okay, I'm gonna show you down at the bottom here. Oops. I just did the opposite of what I wanted to do. Okay, down here at the bottom, it says license under Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial share alike. <laughs> so you can see that you can reuse this. Do y'all um do y'all know why you would want to look for Creative Commons materials as opposed to copyrighted materials in the online environment? Any ideas? Most face-to-face -face classroom teachers don't have to really pay attention to that or care. But when you start posting stuff in content management systems or learning management systems, um, then that can be a copyright infringement. And even though we're educators, um, we don't 
have the openness um, to claim educational use on certain resources um, when it's stored in a location. Exactly, so we don't get sued because there are people out there who are looking for reasons to sue schools. It's actually a trend going on right now. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go back um, to my slideshow. And the next thing that um, we're gonna talk about is the copyrighted resources. And we kind of touched on um, why, why we would um, look for Creative Commons resources as opposed to copyrighted resources is because if we're using it without permission, it's a possibility that um, we could get sued, we could get sued or the school district can get sued. But I don't want that to deter you from trying to use copyrighted materials. You can still use it, you just have to request permission to use it. And so I'm gonna walk you through how to do that. So in order to create an email um, to request permissions, you would want to include in the email your name, your job title, your employer, the resource that you want to use, where you located it, how you intend to use it, and who will have access to it once you use it. And I actually put together a template over here um, to kind of walk you through that. So permission, to, so like the subject line, you could put permission to use resources. You could include the name of the creator in the introduction. You could um, state your job, um, your job title, who you work for, and what project or product you're creating to use with, uh, with that product. So for example, I could say, I'm a digital learning specialist for the D DESE Digital Learning Unit, and I'm creating a professional learning course for our consult educators. Yours might look different um, than that. So you, you can say you're an Arkansas educator um, working for this school district and you're wanting to create a uh, infographic using an image. And then you would go and describe the resource that you're wanting to use or provide the title for it. Sometimes it's hard to find the title if um, it wasn't given one. Um, I will give access to this slideshow so you can um, use this later if you would like, um, but you would close your email with your name and your title and basically you're just telling them that we would like to use this resource for instructional purposes that are not not for profit because we feel this is a, information is a great benefit to the learning goals of uh, the professional learning course, or if you're asking to make an infographic for the students of the course. Um, and then out of professional courtesy, we are extending an official request to use this resource within the course. Thank you for your consideration and we look forward to your response. We appreciate all you do for education. So, this is just an example of what you can use. It's not like there's not a wrong, right or wrong way to do it. Um, but I think if you give them the appropriate information in the first email, you're more than likely to get a response. And it's actually, from my experience, a little bit surprising how willing people are to share their resources um, for education. I mean, people get pretty excited about it and are happy to give their um, materials um, for use. So um, if you'd like to use this, please um, access it and create your own. Um, so the next topic we're going to talk about is creating your own resources. And this is something that I learned to do as an online teacher, for one, to create my own curriculum, but for two, sometimes, um, depending on where you're working at, 
your synchronous sessions may not be as long as a normal classroom period. So you want to get right to the point or you want to um, excite students and engage them right away or you want to formatively assess them and you need something very specific in order to do that. And so creating your own materials is a great way to be very specific to your standards, but also um, to avoid having to search for um, Creative Commons materials. Okay, so let's talk about Canva. How many of you already use Canva? Yes, Canva is awesome. So you can create professional looking resources using Canva. I'm gonna go ahead and switch presentation screens again and come down here to this Canva page so that I can um, show you some things. So Canva actually, um, I, I have it linked here, but you can create um, professional looking materials for like social media, education, marketing, lots of different fields and there are already templates made for this. Um, there's, if you don't know how to use it well or you're trying to improve, there's courses and tutorials and even a blog. Um, and then you can create all th kinds of things like pr presentations, posters, infographics, videos, worksheets, um, and things like that. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up and hopefully I might have to stop share and reshare again, but hopefully you can see it right away. Can you see the Canvas screen? Okay, great. So this is what it looks like. Um, and this is actually my folder. Um, but you can go to all these templates up here. Um, and if you want to do social media posts, this will give you the correct size for each, each kind of social media post. So there's lots of things you can do in here. Um, you can make icons, photos. It's just, it's a really good and easy to use tool. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to my presentation. And I wanted to give you a few resources along with um, information about Canva. So uh, the digital learning unit actually does um, deal days, lunch and learn type of um, 30 minute um, uh, tutorials uh, or presentations every third Thursday. And the last one was actually on um, Canva and it was a really good training. So I just wanted to provide you with this Deal Days Canva training recording in case you wanna go to it. Like I said, it's only 30 minutes long. So um, you, it, it's not real long and heavy, but it's good training. And then the other thing I wanted you to know, if you didn't already, that um, Canva does have a free account for educators. And so um, Kirsten or Amanda is gonna put that link in the chat and we're gonna move on a little bit. Okay, images. So you can bring the attention of your audience um, by using a key concept um, and using icons and illustrations. And so what I wanted to cover with you today is a group, uh, a list of royalty-free image repositories. And so what that is, it's just a, a website that you can go to and download free images um, and their Creative Commons images. So you can do what you want with them. My go-to site is Pixabay. Um, the, it has really good like quality images that you can use and it's public domain. You don't have to request copyright or anything like that. Flickr is another site. Um, it has lots of good cultural stuff on it, but sometimes you do have to check. Um, it's not always Creative Commons, so you want to make sure what the license is with that one. Wikimedia Commons, 
Pexel, Upsplash, and Noun Project are all other image free, um, royalty free image repository sites. Um, and so once you have the images, one of the things that I do is I modify the images with Google Draw. Um, have any of y'all used Google Draw in your classroom before? Okay, well, I'm gonna walk you through it. First, I'm gonna take you to Pixabay and I'm gonna find an image that I can then modify. So <clears throat> hopefully you can see my screen. If not, I'll stop sharing and reshare. Can you see the Pixabay page? All right, awesome. So usually when I'm doing course design or something, I'm gonna specifically uh, search for vector images. Um, and so let's go ahead and stick with our turtle theme. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the image that I want. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go back and show you how to change. So if you want a different image type, you can click in the top right under images. Um, like I said, you can do photos, vectors, or illustrations. I like to do vector graphics because they're easy to modify and easy to place on top of other things um, and make it, um, oh, I like this one, and make it look like it's supposed to go there. So you can look up here in the top and you can see who created this. Open Clip Art Vectors created this. So I'm gonna do my free download. And usually the bigger size that you choose, the better because you can resize the image um, to make it fit whatever you're doing. So I'm gonna download my turtle. Let them know I'm not a robot because I'm not signed in. Then you have to do the captcha. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this as my turtle. Turtle. Okay, now I'm gonna take you to uh, use Google Draw. I'm gonna show you how it makes stuff out of this. So I have a blank sheet already ready to show you. Can you see my blank sheet? My Google Doc. All right, awesome. So I am going to use my Google Draw here. So I'm gonna to go to insert and I'm gonna to go to drawing and click new. So now I have my little canvas up here for me to create my new image. So I'm gonna click the image icon and choose um, my image that I just downloaded, my Tortuga, my turtle. Um, let's see, where did I put it? Okay, got it. All right, here's my little happy turtle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize it. And so let's say I'm teaching vocabulary or something like that, and I wanna add a label. So I'm a Spanish teacher by trade. So I'm gonna add a text label to my image. Let's say I'm gonna put it right down here and I'm going to center it and write Tortuga. Okay, let's make it bigger so it looks good. Let's 
Let's use a different font. So something else I could do, I can add shapes or anything I want to modify this and make it look different. So I'm going to add a, a shape here and I'm going to make it white with a black outline and let's make it a little bit thicker and then I'm going to change the order so that um, the shape goes behind the word and so that's a quick little example of how you can make an image um, out of an image that you got from a royalty free uh, repository and then modified. So if I go to actions, I can download this image as a PDF, a JPEG, a PNG, or a scalable vector graphic. And so um, you can do a lot of things with that. I'm gonna return back to, um, to the course and I'm gonna, uh, to the slideshow, I'm sorry. And I wanna show you some examples of different Google Draw things that I've created. Um, so for this one, I was teaching demonstrative adjectives in Spanish. One thing I wanted to show you is these images are really great because look, I'm going to click on, click on the, oh, click on the shape underneath. And that is actually just a box I put behind this because, um, oops, I messed it up. Um, because these are, these are actually vector graphics. So I put the white box in the background um, so it'll look better on this slide, but I could put it on anything and it would look natural like it's supposed to be there. Okay, and so I'm just going to quickly breeze through some that I've created so that you can um, have an idea of different things you could do. So I just downloaded the, the hands and I put them where I want them and I put the images where I want them and I labeled them. And so you can make a lot of cool things with Google Draw. Okay, I'm going to go to slides now. Um, how many of you use slideshow templates other than what Google already provides or PowerPoint already provides? Awesome. Y'all are ahead of the game. I was teaching online for a long time and I did not know that was available. Like it got so boring using the same slideshows of, uh, all the time. So I have a list of different slideshow templates that you can use um, to make your slideshows look really put together in a minimal amount of time um, that are engaging and uh, that are just free templates. So you could go to Slides Carnival, you could go to Slides Go, Slides Mania. Canva also has slideshows, Upsplash and Noun Project. Actually, I think these two may be, the last two may be um, image repositories and not um, slideshow templates. But I'm gonna go ahead and share Slides Carnival, pull it up so you can see how easy it is if you haven't already done this before. So can you see my Slides Carnival page? Awesome. Okay, so you can search for templates by color, by different um, just types. And I'm not going to search real hard. I'm just going to pick a pretty one from the front page. And so I might like this. You can preview um, the slideshow. But if you scroll down, ooh, you can download this template to Canva, to PowerPoint or to Google Slides and you just click the button and download it and, and it's ready to use. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that at that. Um, but that is uh, surprisingly, some people don't know about that and it's a really good resource. Okay. Ooh, okay. 
So the next thing we're about at 1045. Um, I want to just stop sharing my screen and uh, ask if y'all have any questions, anything special that you do to create your own resources, any copyright questions or anything like that. Is there something that you use that's your go-to that I haven't talked about today? Well, I do have a question. Okay. In Google Slides, you know how you can change the background and they, they let you search the web? Mm -hmm. Are all of those pictures already? Okay. <laughs> how do you know? Because they're just the images. Or Maybe there's a secret place that I haven't. I don't know if we figured out to my open. Head, but what I can, I, I can go research and at the next one I can answer the question if that'll work. Okay. Um, Rainbow, we might research it and before we send out um, the recording because we send it out to everybody afterwards, we could mm -hmm. put that on. This was a question that was asked and this is the, well, the answer we found. Okay. Yeah, so, so that they have it sooner, sooner than March. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> or February, or February, that's the next one, sorry. I'm jumping yeah. a whole month ahead, y'all. I'm on speed, <laughs> trying to speed through this second semester. So my general rule, and, and it's the safest to go, if you can't see the copyright information on there, assume it's copyrighted. Um, but I know Google Keep doesn't really give you a way to to see that, so I'm I will find that out and send it out to you. Are y'all at a place where you are creating your own resources, or are you in a spot where you're still having to use um, paid for curriculum? We have our curriculum, but a lot of it is for printing and doing just on paper. Mm -hmm. And so trying to figure out a way to get the kids to turn it in digitally mm -hmm. is what we're do you what have I'm a, doing. Do you have an LMS or anything like that? What do you use, Schoology? Google Classroom. Google Classroom, okay. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to create a Google form based off of what's there. I know there's a paid for um, called Cami um, that some some people are using, but it, it's actually it's a it's fee based. It's not free, but I I've heard that a lot of teachers that are having to um, that are teaching virtually and they're taking what is printed and converting it are using Cami. I would check with um, if you have, if it's created by a publisher, um, probably check with them to make sure that you're not violating copyright when you convert a worksheet to um, to Cami or to um, a Google form because it's the content on the page, not the worksheet itself that's trademarked or not trademarked, but copyrighted. Um, so there may be some conversations that have to happen regarding that. Um, copyright is funny it can cover something that you're copying and handing out to the kids but then when you convert it to a different medium a different rule applies and if you notice in the chat how i was saying that copyright has become a hot spot in education for legal action that's part of it because of the change in medium it it's that gray area and it's really created some interesting challenges And we tell you all this not to say don't do things, but to keep you aware, to protect you, um, um, and and then trying to show you guys today how you can create some of your own content to possibly work around some of those, um, I call them beautiful constraints. Yeah, it took me a, a long time, I'm talking about years, to get to where I'm at with creating resources. But I just I just started at the very most basic stuff, and um, 
over time, I would like make my PGP, uh, my goal for um, my professional development to be something about creating resources. And so I would have, um, I would have not only artifacts, but I would have time to practice the craft and get better and better. Um, and so over time I've improved, um, but don't be afraid to start where you are. And creating your own content can tie to the, the test standards of student, student engagement. Um, so if you're trying to figure out where that can be, uh, you can tie it to student engagement or you can tie it to um, assessment. Um, there's a whole lot of places that you could tie that PGP to a test, um, test domain and standard. Unless there's any other last minute questions, so I'm gonna share the exit ticket with you all. Um, please fill it out um, so we'll know who was here, um, what you thought about the presentation and what you wanna see in the future. And Kirsten shared that in the chat. So I appreciate you coming today. I hope it was worth your time. We're, we're gonna let you go of about 10 minutes early today. and. I just really appreciate your attendance. Okay, let's let's go see about permission to access. I wouldn't expect it any other way. I hope you. I really appreciate you guys as you were patient with us, um, um, especially with the video earlier. And then um, you know, as we put these things together, we think we think of everything, but I'm sure you run into this too. So. Just know that we are digital learning specialists, but I tell our team all the time, we're living in beta mode. Um, and so uh, as she's fixing the permissions on it, thank you for your patience and know that we're, we are not perfect. And I hope that you learn from our modeling of our, um, as we do things that you just kind of roll with it. Um, and that it's, that's how our students learn too. When they see you guys, you know, learning about how things work and how they flow out. But we hope that you appreciate that, that we didn't come completely perfect to the to the presentation. Almost done. You got it, Raymond. <laughs> okay. Almost. They just, um, it, once you refresh it, I should be able to share that same link, correct? Okay. Hang on. All right, I think it's fixed. I'm refreshing and so hopefully y'all are refreshing. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> You want to copy the link from yours? Maybe my link isn't good anymore. Yeah, let's try that. It says there's six responses in there. Maybe they're all digital learning unit responses. I think I just fixed it, Rainbow. Okay. Awesome. All right. While y'all are filling that out, um, I wanted to let you know that um, in January, we transitioned to a new website that's on the DLU website, which you can access here. Um, I also wanted to tell you guys that um, just like we mentioned our um, third Thursday for our lunch and learn, um, in February, um, February 17th, we are doing a lunch and learn that is going to be over social media. Um, so if you do a social media site for your class or you help with your, your school's uh, social media, or maybe you have a, a side hustle where you are managing social media on top of your own personal social media, there may be some really good pointers that you might want to take away from this. It's gonna be presented by Robin Finley, um, who managed all of the social media in a large district in, to, um, in Arkansas before she came to our team. 
And then um, also our communication, uh, somebody that used to be on our team and she's just gone to the communications team with Desi, Emily Powell Carpenter is gonna also be joining us for that. Um, registration for the next deal days is, uh, on social media is there, uh, the form that Amanda just listed. Um, you can also find it on our DLU website that I um, put in the chat as well. And then I also wanted to let you know that Digital Learning Day is going to be on uh, February 22nd, 2022. So it's going to be on 22222. So we encourage everyone to wear their tutus, take pictures and share them out and tag us on our social media, which is on Facebook and Twitter. Also throughout that week, we will be posting questions to engage with you guys about what is happening in digital learning in your classrooms um, with your students. And then we have an exciting announcement on the actual digital learning day, two, 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 we are launching the DLU podcast entitled Living in Beta Mode. Um, and so we will have our initial podcast and then we'll be releasing a podcast every two weeks after that um, for the first, um, before the first season that will end the Jan, uh, June 1st and then we'll start up a new season in the fall. So we'll hope that you become an avid listener of our podcast as well. Any other questions? Yes, thank you so much for all of you coming. Be sure if you're not already, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and we.